Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Sebastián Jordán Montaño, and today I am going to be talking about memory profiling in Faro. So first, I'm going to say a few words about me. Well, I did my bachelor's degree in software engineering in, in Bolivia, in my home country. Then I did my master's thesis uh, in a University of Lille in France. Now I am uh, starting a PhD in profiling in the AirMod, now Everf team with uh, Stefan Gishem. It was some of my personal interests, I like music, I like progressive rock, also Charlie Garcia. <laughs> if you don't know who is Charlie, I can answer that question later. Also, I like languages, like real languages, not programming languages. <laughs> I like sports and, of course, I like Faro. So well, in this talk, I'm going to present a memory profiler tool that we developed. It's called Iimani. So like, these are some basic features that it has. It has an open source MIT license. It can detect object allocation sites. Also, it tracks the object lifetimes. It also, it presents the information with several uh, visualizations. For example, it has an allocation matrix, a density chart. It, it presents the memory consumption in tables. It has a rig object-oriented model that it serves to query the, the profiler, for example. And finally, it runs on an unmodified virtual machine. And it runs from Faro 11 and 12, uh, 10 also, and you, you don't need a modified virtual machine to run it. So I'm going to start with uh, some of the definitions first. First, I'm going to say what is an object allocation site. So the definition that we took is that an object allocation site is the textual location in the source code where the object was created. For example, in this, you can see the initialize method in the Athens scanner class, and in one part is doing an order collection new. So the method initialize of the class Athens is an allocation site for order collection objects in this example. So uh, how can we capture object allocation sites in Faro? So in Faro, almost all computations are done by sending a message. And this also is true when allocating objects. For example, let's take the example of the order collection new. If we look at the implementation of the method, we see that order collection new calls a new with a parameter 10 that inside the implementation, it allocates actually two objects. First, it do a self basic new and then sets collection of self array new. If we go at the basic new and new with argument uh, implementation, we see that we have two primitive objects, uh, with pr two primitive methods. And actually, the primitive methods are the ones that are making the actual allocation. So in this example, for allocating an order collection, we actually we make two allocations, one for the order collection and one for the array that is in internal for the order collection. So with this, we look at the primitives that are available in Faro, and we decided to instrument these three methods that allocate objects. We have the behavior, uh, basic new, basic new with argument, and the array class new. But it's important to say that these are not the only primitives that are allocate objects in Faro, but are the ones that we saw and we mm, investigated that actually are the ones that it makes sense to instrument. So how the instrumentation works. For example, in this example, we have the initialize in the Athens uh, text scanner class, or the collection new we go to basic new, and when the basic new calls the primitive basic new to make the allocation, we put the instrumentation in the middle. So how the instrumentation works, actually that is going to be explained tomorrow by Gish and Pablo in the tomorrow's talk about instrumenting Faro. Don't miss that. And well, we do the same also for the other allocation. So with this uh, instrumentation, each time that we have an allocation through the primitives that we instrumented, we inside, we will take the allocation site. The allocation site is the class and the method. And we also have uh, take some useful information, for example, the size in memory and other things that we need for later analysis. So uh, at the beginning, we talk about the object's lifetime. Now we will start the, the definition of an object's lifetime. For us, is the finalization time minus the allocation time. But what does this mean? So but in Faro, as you may already know, we have a generational garbage collector. So our garbage collector doesn't allow us to have the actual lifetime, that is the exact lifetime of the object in the exact moment in which it becomes enrichable. But what it happens inside Faro is that the garbage collector is running like uh, 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 continuously. And when an object becomes enrichable, sometime later, it can, uh, we don't know exactly which time, the garbage collector is going to detect the object and is going to prepare it to finalize it. And then it's going to put it in a, in a finalization queue, and then it's going to finalize the object. 
So the approximative lifetime that, that we got is actually we do with these two extra time, time lapse about the garbage collector preparation and the finalization of the object. So we used our profiler to two case studies to see if we can actually do it, uh, use it for something. In the first one, we took morphic. So in this case, we decided to profile the allocations of type color. Why color? Because what well, a Faro expert, uh, also known as Steph, <laughs> had like an intuition that we were making that something weird. So what we did is we opened 30 Faro tools, 10 times the inspector, 10 times the playground, and 10 times iceberg. And we let each of the tools to render for 100 uh, rendering morphic cycles. During this uh, rendering process, we profile uh, the, all the object, uh, the color allocations. And the first thing that we can see is, for example, in the allocations over time, we see that the Faro dark team, because I, in my computer was the dark team uh, in that time like running, it makes way more allocation than all the other top, uh, this is the top five allocator classes of colors and the difference between the first and the second is huge. So in this like gives us a first insight to say that, okay, maybe we should look at the implementation of the dark team. Then also like th doing some analysis, we saw that not only that the dark theme made 60% of all the allocations, but also we managed to identify that of those 60% of the allocations that are 15,000 uh, colors, we actually allocate 99.9 .9 redundant allocations. What does that mean? That we are allocating the same color over and over. For example, red, rare, or black, black, black. Of the 15,000, we have 15 different kind of like that. So we, in the first time we have this information. Then well, we look at the implementation of the Faro uh, theme and we saw that uh, well, we could improve this. What we did is we implemented a color palette that actually has catches the objects and like that we don't have these redundant allocations. Then we profile again our application after our fix and that we see that well, the orders of magnitudes that are different and the dark theme or the theme doesn't appear uh, anymore in the top allocator classes. We also have other allocation side, but uh, is, this is outside of the theme, it's outside Morphix, so we didn't focus on that. And finally, as I mentioned, we have the allocation matrix, so we can detect other allocation sites. For example, we rerun the profile, but this time not for only capture color objects, but to capture all the allocations. And in this uh, allocation matrix that we see that actually the objects that we are allocating the most is rectangles and margins, and these are allocated by these methods. So this uh, allocation matrix is very useful also to see the differences between the allocation sites because if we put only numbers, it cannot, it can, it doesn't have the same meaning. And for our second study case, we st uh, well, studied data frame. That for the ones that don't know, data frame is a table structure for data analysis in Faro. Basically, it's a library that we have for doing data analysis. And for this, we. we First, we decide to benchmark the loading of data sets to data frame. For example, we did these three benchmarks, uh, one for a 500 megabyte data set, 1.6 and 3.1 gigabytes. And we found something in interesting that, for example, if you can see for the big data frame, we take around 40,000, 4,000 seconds to load in which we spend around 89% only garbage collecting. So this gives us an insight, okay, we can improve this by improving the garbage collector performance, for example. So what we did is we profiled the object lifetimes for uh, the, well, for the, or data frame. This is for the 500 megabyte data frame. And for example, with this density chart, we can see that 60% of the allocated memory, it's free almost uh, instant, in, instantly. Like it lives less than one second. So that means that we have 40% of the memory, that is the one that is on the other side, that stays until the end of the application. And this is the same for the number of objects. So in this case, we have 75% of objects that uh, die young, and we have 25 that uh, stay until the end. So normally, garbage, uh, generational garbage collectors, the, the one that we have in Faro, they are not uh, developed or they are not configured uh, to have like this behavior. This, for example, this is the normal behavior or like a, the a behavior of the most uh, applications and the garbage collector are normally configured to this, to have like a, the majority of objects that they die young and only a few that they stay until the end. So with all of this information, we decided to uh, choose five default, uh, well, five configurations for our garbage collector. These configurations, they have the purpose of um, basically minimizing the 
the ways, the times that the garbage collector is passing and trying to allocate it, all the objects directly into the old space. And with this, we saw that we got up until 6.8 uh, uh, improved performance. That is, we, from one hour in a total execution time, we managed to execute the same code in nine minutes. So, yeah, quite a good improvement. So, for the future, so first we want to study the precision of the approximated lifetimes. As I talked in the in the beginning, we uh, we don't actually have the exact uh, lifetime of the object. We have some delay because of our how how our garbage collector is implemented. So we want to have we want to study this precision. We on, we also want to calculate the object lifetimes at virtual machine level. Why? Because well, as you may imagine, the instrumentation has a lot of overhead and also for the object lifetimes, we use uh, ephemerons as a technique to finalize the objects and also ephemerons introduce a large overhead. So we want to experiment doing it at virtual machine level. And finally, also we would like to start do, seeing how could we can make dynamic optimizations based on allocation sites. For example, if during a, an execution of a code, we detect that for example, 90% of the objects of, that are allocated in one specific allocation site, they live until the end of the program. We can say, okay, maybe we can allocate these objects directly into the, uh, all the space of the garbage collector and like that, we pre-tenure pre the objects. And like this also can have like a performance improvements. Uh, well, that was uh, my talk. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Okay, so. So the question was if the allocation site is the last place before calling basic new. So yeah, I, what I did, uh, I didn't say it, but actually, no, what we do when the allocation site, we filter the, um, the stack and the allocation site is when we say the message new, not the right before basic new. Like in the example of the, in the example that I put, the allocation site is the, the scanner class, Athens scanner. Okay. So uh, the question is, how do we know, how do we compare objects? How do we know if the two objects are the same? Okay, so for the case study of uh, colors, we compare using the quality operator. So yes, and also after we, we look for more complex objects in which it can, more be, it can be expensive to use the quality operator, well, we didn't uh, have a more deeper look on, into, into that. For the moment, we only use the quality operator that, it, that is implemented on the class. Yes, we, 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 we read the, the, that paper. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's more, there's two questions there. So the question is if we study bigger objects, and yes, for example, data frame, it, it, uh, when it allocates, it also allocates big objects that are complex. If I, if I understood the question correctly. Uh, I think Domenico had a... Time. 
So the question is if we could use this to see what happens in memory for profiling an application. In, in yes, actually we can use it, but uh, we need to not after but during. The profiling happens during the execution of the program. And yes, if, if you want, we can try it um, after. There is one more question. Uh, one more, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you said that your roadmap uh, is very interesting. Are you considering a very kind of very constrained and all people that are going to use it? Or do you think that I'm just. Because I, I think that's very complex. Uh, the memory map is something which is very thin, and it's not very close to what. I, I didn't uh, understood. It's, it's a query, but it can happen to one that if they use the tool, they can come in and use just what they do with that. Ah, okay. So the, the question was if we want to see how people use our tool? Um, not for you, in fact. Uh, it's okay, because there are two things <laughs> already. Like how, uh, how, how, people, uh, how someone can use your tool, but they do tool like that. So those are uh, you. Do you like more? Uh, yes, about the question. So yes, actually, we want the people to use our tool to like track uh, memory uh, issues that they may have and to improve the, their code. Yes. There is one question here. The question is if we tried with uh, FFI variables, and no, the answer is no. In the application that we study, we don't, we didn't um, try FFI, but in this implementation, we will not track the allocations because with FFI, the allocations are done outside FAR. They are done by the FFI library. library. Sometimes we have garbage issues when using FFI. Yes, uh, for the moment we didn't work on that. I know that there is work of Martin Diaz that he made a profiler for FFI, but for the moment we didn't consider that. The question was if I can show the garbage collector configuration, and yes, I can show them. Yes, so actually uh, these are the configurations that we, uh, I cannot make it big. Okay, so yes, and actually this is uh, it also comes from supporting the default FAR OVM, so anyone can try it. But yeah, basically we increase the Eden size until max, the grow headroom to allocate more memory, a lot of memory, and then the GC radio is to say to to limit the times that the garbage collector passes. Like this, the, the last one is a very extreme configuration. Yes. Yes, you can. If you have to use a power, you can do not access to those uh, parameters and to the default uh, to the default VM. So you can say to power, okay, I want to to allocate that to those parameters. There is no more questions, but thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.